Thanks to Karma for sponsoring this video. It's always been interesting to me when a company ventures out of their lane when a software company makes hardware. But Google's been one that's been really interesting in that field. You know, they're a company that likes to innovate quickly and then just try to fix it later with software. And no other product line from Google lives by that mantra like the Pixel does. But the Pixel 5, that strategy looks like it might finally be over. A company that thinks software can solve any shortcoming might have finally hit a roadblock. Let me explain. I don't know about you, but I feel like I've been living in a time warp. I don't know if it's been weeks or months have gone by, but the Pixel 5 has been out as of this filming for almost exactly six months. And in that time, the classic Pixel tropes still really hold true, the good and the bad. The external hardware is really top notch. The camera is obviously absolutely baller and software experience is still pretty close to unmatched on Android. These are some of the most important traits that make the Pixel a Pixel, but with the 5, it's the first time that Google took a really different approach with the top of the Pixel lineup. There's no longer a $1,000 flagship. Instead, they're opting for a $700 mid-range phone, and, but keeping all of those great Pixel hallmarks in place. But even with the lower price and the six months that I've been using this phone, I spent a lot of time with it. Those amazing qualities that made the Pixel stand out and why a lot of reviewers, myself included, put it on a pedestal are starting to fade. And that is not to be interpreted as this being a bad phone because it is most definitely not. But what has changed is the lore of the Pixel line has changed. And I think it's in need of a refresh. And I think Google has an incredible opportunity on their hands. So nowhere is like the Pixelness more clear than like the camera, right? That's what the Pixel is known for. Pixel 5 has two of them on the back, the made wide angle and the second ultra wide. And there's no denying anybody, even the most staunch iPhone fanboys would look at Pixel photos and be like, yeah, I get it, bro. Like, those are good cameras, and they are. And I have said it a million times, but it bears repeating again, Google was leaps and bounds ahead of the competition with the camera software developed years ago, and that is still showing to this day. They were so far ahead then that the rest of the industry is now just finally starting to catch up five generations in. And that's to say that any photo that you want to take is going to be some version of really good. Uh, bright day, low light, portrait mode, night shot. You're taking pictures of the stars. This camera can handle it. Someone like me, you take pictures of kids moving and I use these photos to send to my parents, send to grandparents who I can't see all the time. I want a really good camera to capture those memories. And I know whenever I pick up my Pixel 5 that the photo is just going to be awesome. But on the other hand, I don't think it has the charm that the Pixel used to. I know that's subjective, uh, but I think the reason is pretty simple. It's basically the same camera we've had since the Pixel 3. I actually made an entire video going all the way back to the Pixel 2, and the camera quality between each generation is surprisingly identical. We'll link that video down below. That just again shows how far ahead the Pixel was, but now software can only get them so far. They've hit up against a hardware ceiling. And I know I'm in the minority, but like I miss having telephoto. I zoom in on stuff, whether it's family or I got bad eyesight, I like to zoom in. This is something that was there on the Pixel 4, but replaced with a wide angle on Pixel 5. But now in like early-ish 2021, there is no reason to not have both. With all the phones released in the last six months since Pixel 5, it is a glaring omission from the Pixel line. There are phones that cost $400, even if they are cheap sensors, still give you the wide, ultra wide, and telephoto. But I imagine Google's processing what it could be capable of if there was a sensor there to just gather more light. Uh, it seems like Google's answer to that question is, software's good enough and we'll just throw more software at it, but I don't think it's cutting it anymore. Not because what we have now is bad, but because I know the camera could be so much better and so much more useful if the hardware matched the amazing software. During the past like 12 months, I did a lot more online shopping than perhaps I have ever done before. And chances are, I am not alone. And that adds up, and more importantly, it gets expensive. So any way that you can save bucks while buying your stuff online, in my mind is a good thing. 
Uh, and the sponsor of this video is Karma. It's an app and a Chrome extension. You may have heard of them with their previous name. It used to be called Shop Tagger. They changed the name to reflect the good karma putting it out in the world by helping you save money online. And it is a really easy thing to use. First, it's totally free. You can go to the Chrome store and just download it. Uh, you can also go to Karma's homepage and download it from there as well. So once you've got that done, really, you're all set. Go to wherever you want to buy some stuff. Click the button or the slider when you see an item that you want to save some money on. You can also move the button to up and down if it's easier for you. And that's it. You can see if you can save some money. Uh, you can also make a list of all the products you want. You can organize them into wish lists so you can sort of make your shopping a little bit easier and more mindful and then get notified whenever you can get a discount on those things. So what's happening in the background is Karma is essentially scanning the web using some pretty cool tech for coupon codes. You can use this on Chrome, so your desktop or laptop, and automatically will test each one and then apply the best one for you when you check out. So you don't have to like Google best codes for X things. It's just gonna do it all for you. You can also earn cash via PayPal if you will shop from select retail partners. And they got a pretty long list there as well. So if you wanna get in like max value, uh, you can do that and you can actually make money for shopping. Buying things for the studio, for my house, for my parents. I've seen discounts that go as high as 60%, literally for just clicking a button. Um, it's a great way to save money, it costs you nothing. It is really easy and simple to use. So if you wanna check Karma out and save as much money as possible, and again, totally free, uh, we'll put a link down below to download it for your browser uh, or your phone. There's one reason that I haven't picked up the Pixel 5 as much as I would have before, it's video. For a company that is seriously flexing their software prowess with every single photo I take, it seems like video is not just an afterthought, it's a uh, after afterthought. The video here still looks compressed, it looks oversaturated, sometimes overexposed, it just doesn't look good at all. And again, phones are less expensive, do a much better job at video. And I don't wanna keep bringing a company like OnePlus up here or even talk about Samsung with their FV edition phones. The competition is taking video seriously and it's becoming more and more apparent that Google just isn't. And for folks who want to shoot video, it is really important to at least be good enough and the Pixel video is just not good enough. And if some of this is coming across as negative, and as I hear the words coming out, I know it could be interpreted that way, but it's coming like uh, from a position of love. Like I'm trying to encourage my kids to be better because I know what they're capable of. I know what Google can do. We've seen it with the original Pixel and the Pixel 2. When they have good hardware and good software, the photo quality can be amazing. And I want to see that again with stills, with video, make that a priority. And I think Google could easily retake the throne of best camera and best video in the market. All right, so some of that stuff was a little bit negative, but there is still a lot of positive with the Pixel 5 and things that I personally still really like. So the build is an area where maybe Google's taking a bit of flack, um, but this is still not a flashy phone. It's utilitarian, it's pixely, it's pixelish through and through. But six months in, I've come to appreciate the design more now than I did when it came out. Now listen, I know that I am not paying top dollar for flashy materials, I'm not getting ceramic or crazy glass. I'm not expecting revolutionary design. And it's still a lot of money to spend for a phone, and I'm getting one that feels really good in the hand and is built really well and very solid. I am definitely missing an XL version. I would have hopped on that in a hot second if it was available. I like big phones, and I cannot lie, the 5 felt small in my hands. Um, had there been an XL version, I would have been a happy fellow. So I am glad that Google went back to traditional fingerprint sensor, and for the price of a phone, it's a good sacrifice to not have face unlock or under screen fingerprint reader, especially in the era of wearing masks and having it on the back works, doesn't get in the way, and it works incredibly fast. And the good stuff continues on the front of the phone. The 6.8 inch 1080p panel is bright and vibrant, and I love it. You guys have heard me say it a million times, it's got a high refresh rate, 90 hertz. I think that is a great compromise between the 60 and 120. I just, I love a higher refresh rate. 120 obviously would have been better, but in real life, I don't notice that much of a difference between 90 and 120. So you get the smooth display while keeping the price down with that 1080p resolution. It is a perfect compromise of a display. 
So the main reason that Google got the price down is in processor. It's running the 765G processor. But for a lot of people, that's been a reason to not want to get the phone. But for those that have used phones, 765G, they know the secret that it is still a really capable processor. And when this phone came out in 2020 and now in 2021, pretty much every phone performs great. Maybe it's a spoiler alert, whether it's an iPhone, Samsung, Snapdragon processor in there, whatever it might be. But again, harkening back to the camera side, Google's mantra with the Pixel has been good software, good software, good software. And those that are worried that the mid-range processor is going to get in the way of good software, it doesn't at all. Now, none of this is to say there can't be improvements. And in fact, in the April software update, Google fixed some issues with the GPU performance. And according to tests in 3 Mark, can lead up to 50% improvements in speed, which is insane and crazy. But the real issue was original optimization of the chip from the beginning. Uh, how can they find 50% improvement six months later that maybe should have been there from the get-go? Uh, Google is now just fixing those issues. So while it's good to see Google's continued update and support to those phones, I would have liked to have had that at launch. But like I said, for anything you are trying to do, this phone still works great. And I wanna commend Google for realizing there's improvements to be made and making them even if they did come later than perhaps consumers would have liked. And that same theory applies to battery. Last year, I mean, I don't know how else to say it, Google failed miserably with battery life. But now with the five, that's no longer the problem. You can easily go through a day with one charge. Probably not quite two, but at the very least, battery is not something you have to worry about anymore when using the phone. And for that, I'm just, that's claps for Google. As much as I love the Pixel 4, I could not use that phone because it barely lasted me three quarters of a day. The five, is easily a day phone. And like I said before, I don't have to think about battery. And that is welcome to the Pixel line. To boil it down, and perhaps most importantly, like now six months in, none of the compromises that Google made to get to that lower price point get in the way. I understand them. In a lot of ways, I can appreciate them and I can respect what was left in and then appreciate what was taken out. So in a vacuum, uh, the Pixel 5 is a near perfect phone. It doesn't break the bank. It sports the must have features like a high refresh rate, at least for me, um, a great display and really, really amazing cameras. But when you pull it out of that vacuum and you compare it to the other phones that exist in the world, you start to see the little holes become exposed. And I think that's because of Google's philosophy. They can't seem to settle on a direction. They're using software as a crutch for a lot of things. And because they've been so good at software, they've been able to get away with it. And don't think that I don't appreciate Google trying new things, but eventually we got to settle on one thing and kind of lean into it for a few years. Um, software can do some amazing things and clearly Google's proven that, but now it's time for the next step. It's time for Google to use what they've learned with software over the years of experimentation and bring it to a true flagship. And I imagine to myself what that would look like. Google's got the chance to be king here, but for now, they're just trying to keep up. And again, if you wanna check out Karma, uh, we'll put a link down below to download it for your browser uh, or your phone.